in the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, we are shown a future picture of the day when we, the genuine believer, when we have crossed the finish line, when we are in God's heavenly kingdom. The picture that we see here in heaven, it is filled with great happiness. Mm -hmm. It is filled with great joy. It is filled with pump and circumstance. In other words, there is going to be a great celebration yes, yes. that we see in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this month, I have been taking a look at our journey, our walk of faith, through life as we, the true believer, as we make our way to the finish line, mm -hmm. the finish line being heaven. Come on, come on. The journey we know is not an easy one as we have many trials, yes. we have many tribulations, we have many adversaries, we have the great adversary. Yes. Yes. Think about it, just this past week, we know again that there was another mass shooting. Mm -hmm. That was done out of hatred. Oh. Yeah. This yeah. again turned to the fruitless conversations of gun control and yeah. racism existing still, they say, oh. as if it is some kind of surprise. Yeah. 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 Now imagine going through all of what we go through right. in life. Mm -hmm. Those heartaches, those worries, the pain, the stress, the burdens. Yeah. Imagine going through all of this only to receive nothing at the finish line. Mm -hmm. If that was me, I would wonder what I even live for all right. to not receive nothing at the finish line. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell you today that some are walking their journey just to receive nothing at right. the finish line. All right. Come on. Personally, at the end of my journey, I tell you today that I want to be rewarded. I, know. Yes, sir. I want to be rewarded after all that I have gone through in my life on this journey. Yes. And I want that reward to be a good reward. Oh, yes. I want that reward to be a good prize, if you will, which I tell you today, I know for a certainty mm -hmm. is waiting for me at one of the finish lines. Well, well, well. So I want to focus on that finish line today. Mm -hmm. I want to focus on what awaits all who have followed where God has guided them. Yes. I want to focus on today where God, all of those who have depended on him, mm -hmm for his providers and for his protection will lead them. Yeah. Yeah. As we have seen in recent weeks through our Sunday school, mm -hmm. every knee will bow and every tongue will confess yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. In other words, everyone yeah. will be judged by him. Now, from what we have studied in scripture, we know that the righteous will go and stand before the judgment seat of Christ at their finish line. Yeah, yeah. The wicked, we know they will go and stand before the great white throne at their finish line mm -hmm. to face judgment. Yeah. Now, this is a subject that Paul spent a great deal of time focusing on and teaching about to believers. Mm -hmm. In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul encouraged the Corinthians to run the race of faith yeah. in a manner to obtain a reward from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why we see Paul speak about this so often in his letters, uh -huh. the reason why he focused on this subject mm -hmm. was because Paul understood that there were rewards waiting at the finish line for both the wicked and the righteous. Now, someone may stop and they may think to themselves, the wicked here, the wicked are going to receive a reward, someone may ask. Yeah. Well, you see, I tell you today that all will be rewarded for their journey through life. And this 
includes the wicked ones as well. Well, well. Now, to show you this, we will see in the book of Isaiah that the Lord said through the prophet, he said, woe to the wicked. It shall be ill with him, God said, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. The reward of his hands, the Lord said, Mm -hmm. shall be given to the wicked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the reward of the wicked, I tell you today, will be given to them at the great white throne. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that that reward will be ill. In other words, meaning that reward will not be a healthy reward. Mm-hmm. That reward will not be a good reward. Well, all right. Today, the wicked spend all of their time laboring for the riches that are of this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But where does their laboring get them? Mm-hmm. On the spiritual journey, their laboring, it gets them nowhere. All right. Well, all right. In fact, the gains that they do have in the world Those gains are temporary. Mm -hmm. They are temporary because as we know, this world is going to pass away. This world is not going to exist. This world is going to pass away into nothingness. Mm -hmm. So the reward that awaits the wicked at their finish line is this world and this world, it is nothing. And spiritually speaking, their reward will be nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you hear me here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Solomon, when he spoke about the wicked and their desires for worldly riches, he said that it is vanity. He said that it is like trying to grasp the wind. Mm -hmm. You cannot do it. It is futile. It cannot be obtained. Their rewards, in other words, Solomon said, cannot be obtained. So in the end, there's no true profit to the laboring of the riches of this world. Those who labor for the riches of this world will one day have to leave this world. And as Paul said to Timothy, we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain, Paul said, that we cannot carry anything out of this world. He said we can carry nothing out of it. So the reward at the finish line for the wicked is emptiness. The reward at the finish line for the wicked is loneliness. They will be cast away from God for all of eternity. Out of his presence, there will be no happiness. There will be just sorrow. As the soul of the wicked will wallow in pity for all of eternity. Now, I have to ask this question. Does this sound like a reward that you would want to receive? Does this sound like a reward that you would want to receive after going through this journey that is life, that is difficult, that is hard, that is stressful, that brings us nothing but heartache, stress, and pain? Does this sound like a reward that you would want? This is not the kind of reward that anyone should want. This is not the kind of reward that anyone should desire to receive at the end of their journey through life. At the judgment seat of Christ, those who genuinely believe will not receive such an ill reward. Christ is not going to give us that. We are shown in scripture that when the true believer reaches the finish line, we will be blessed. We will be blessed with the good rewards of the Lord, our God. Mm -hmm. To the Corinthians in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, and if you look at the 50th through the 55th verse, 
Paul said that in the twinkling of an eye, when Christ returns for the church, the true believer, Paul said, will be changed. This change, Paul said, it is the beginning of the many rewards that awaits the true believers. He said that we shall be raised incorruptible and that this mortal which we are now will put on immortality, Paul said. And most importantly, Paul said that we will have victory. Victory, Paul said, that we would have when we reach the finish line. Yes, yes. In his letter, James, he joined Paul in speaking about this great day, that day when we all get to heaven. James, he wrote, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, James said, he will receive a reward. That reward, James said, is the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. The crown of life. Mm -hmm. A reward. A heavenly reward that is waiting for us at the finish line. I want you to understand today that this is not a reward that James was making up. from his own imagination. Mm -hmm. But this is a reward that is very real. And we will see Jesus himself speak of this reward in scripture. In the book of Revelation, Mm -hmm. we see in the second chapter and the 10th verse where Jesus speaks of this same crown to those who were suffering at the church in Smyrna. Jesus said, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested Mm -hmm. and you will have tribulation 10 days. But Jesus said to those who are of that church, he said, be faithful until death. Said, be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. The crown of life, I tell you today, that it is very real. I know that it is real because Jesus, the Lord, has told me that it is real. Do you want that crown? You and I, we suffer today. You and I, we go through some things, don't we? Do you want that crown? Yet through all of our suffering, I tell you today for a certainty, for truth, that there is a crown that is waiting for you at the finish line. Are you going to go and get that crown that's at the finish line? I don't know about you today, but I'm making my way for that crown. That's waiting for me at the finish line. I want to get to that finish line today. As we continue in the book of Revelation, in that same chapter, that that second chapter of Revelation, Mm -hmm. in the 17th verse, we will see that the rewards are many for those that choose to depend on God's guidance, that choose to depend on his direction, Mm -hmm. that choose to depend on his providence and his protection. Jesus said to those that overcome, he, Jesus, will give them some of the hidden manna to eat. Again, talking about the rewards that's waiting for us at the finish line. Mm -hmm. Manna, we remember, was the bread of heaven that was given to the children of Israel to replenish them, to nourish them as they journeyed in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. They lived by manna, and they lived by manna alone for quite a bit on their journey to the promised land. 
Now, when we get to the promised land, when we get to the finish line and when we cross, yeah. when we cross over that finish line, Jesus says to us today that there is some hidden manna that is waiting for us. Yeah. This hidden manna that has been waiting for us, that is laid up in heaven for us. Do you want some of that manna today? Yeah. Yeah. Because it is laid up for us in heaven, this manna, I want you to understand that it is not physical, but spiritual. This manna, because it is of heaven, heaven being eternal, I want you to know that this manna is eternal. Do you want this manna today? Do you want this reward? This eternal manna, I want you to understand today that it will provide us with spiritual nourishment. It will provide us with life that is eternal and it will do this again for all of eternity. Do you want this manna? Do you want this reward that's at the finish line? In that same verse there in the 17th verse, we see Jesus speak of another reward that's waiting for us in heaven. Will we cross that finish line? Jesus again saying to those that overcome, he says that he will reward those that overcome with a white stone. Mm -hmm. And on that stone will be a new name that is written, that is engraved on that stone, that no one will know except the one who receives that stone. Mm -hmm. This sounds like to me, this sounds like a very unique reward, a very unique prize. I want you to understand today that this is a very unique token that is given to all who make it to heaven. It is given to every child of God because we all overcome our trials because we will all have overcome our tribulations that are of the world. Those tribulations uh, of sin, of the wicked ones who have gone up against us, we will be rewarded with this unique token because of our faith in the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. All right, son. Come on. Yeah. This new name, mm -hmm. I want you to understand today that it is not a new name that is assigned to you. But a name of Christ that is engraved on the stone personally to you. Yeah, yeah. This stone, I want you to understand today that we will carry it like it is a signet. Mm -hmm. And we will carry it for all of eternity as a seal of our being in fellowship with Christ. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but I want my crown I not only want my crown today, I want you to understand that I want that manna as well. Not only do I want my crown and that manna, but I want this stone. I want this precious stone as well. I want my rewards. Yeah, yeah. I hear you, son. I haven't gone through life for nothing. Mm -hmm. I haven't walked this path for nothing. Mm -hmm. I want my reward. Yeah. All right. And I tell you today, I believe that God is going to give me that reward mm -hmm. as well. All right. I have been faithful. Mm -hmm. And in this walk of faith, we who are all genuine in our faith, all right. we who all truly believe, I tell you today that we have a crown that we have manna and we have this precious stone, but yet there is more for us. It does not end there. When we get over to my text for today, in the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation, where my key verse is located at for today, we'll see the picture of heaven even more. And in this picture, we we'll see that heaven is full of joy. And again, it is full of celebration. The first verse of this chapter, it opens with a view of a great multitude, we are told. And we see this great multitude in heaven. This great multitude is rejoicing. 
this great multitude we see here, this multitude is singing praises to the Lord, our God. All right, yeah. This great multitude I want you to see here, I want to point out to you today that it is made up of all who have believed. Mm -hmm. There are elders that are present there. All right. There are believers of the church age that are there. Mm -hmm. There are tribulation saints that will come through the great tribulation that are there. There's an unnumbered amount of heavenly angels that are there as well. All right. um, I want you to understand this. I want you to see this today. Mm -hmm. You and I are there. All right. You and I, the true believers, we are seen in this picture. Do you realize that you are already in heaven? Mm -hmm. The future is already written for you. All right. So what this means for us is that all we have to do is simply stay the course. Yes. We're on a journey through life. Mm -hmm. We know where our end destination is. Yes, all we have to do is stay the course. Yes, yes. And if we stay the course, that picture will be fulfilled. Oh, yes. All right. All right. When we all get to heaven, you see, we are going to be singing. We are going to be rejoicing. We're going to do, be doing these things because we're going to be happy. All right. All right. Because we have overcome mm -hmm. those trials. Mm -hmm. We have overcome every tribulation that we have today. Mm -hmm. We will have victory. All right. yeah. So all those trials, tribulations, and adversaries that tried to crush you, they will have failed because you stood firm in your faith in Christ. Yes. Satan, the devil who throws everything that he possibly can at us mm -hmm. because of this picture that we see today, we know that he fails. Oh, yes. We know that he fails because again, we stood firm in our faith in Christ and Satan did not tear us down. Satan did not break us. Mm -hmm. When we cross the finish line and enter into the heavenly kingdom, you better believe that we are going to be rejoicing greatly. Mm -hmm. yes. See, being in the heavenly kingdom of the Lord is going to be a great reward. Mm -hmm. With a voice, the sound of many waters and mighty thunderings, we are told there in my key verse that the great multitude will sing out, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent, all powerful, he reigns. Mm -hmm. Not sin, mm -hmm. not wickedness, mm -hmm. not all those trials and those tribulations mm -hmm. that desire to defeat us. Mm -hmm. Those things don't reign any longer. Mm -hmm. Our God reigns. Mm -hmm. Our God overcame those things. Yes. And because we have faith in him, we too. We too overcame as well. Oh, yes. Now notice here in this picture, notice that there is no sadness. Mm -hmm. Notice that there is no grief. Mm -hmm. There is no pain. There's no wallowing in pity here. Mm -hmm. When the true believer crosses the finish line, there's only going to be happiness mm -hmm. and great joy. Mm -hmm. This happiness and joy is truly a great reward another prize, especially when compared to what we go through today. Do you want that eternal happiness? Do you want that eternal joy? Do you want the great reward of heaven today? In the second of my key verses, the seventh verse there, we see another reward another prize for those who are true to the faith, those who genuinely believe today. We will see the great multitude announce that the marriage of the lamb has come and that his wife has made herself ready. 
The lamb, I want you to know, is Christ. The wife of Christ, I want you to know today, are all of those that believe during the age of the church. Mm -hmm. That is from Pentecost to the rapture. Mm -hmm. The wife of Christ is the church. That's right. That's right. So here we see another reward yes. for those that genuinely believe in Christ today. Mm -hmm. You as a genuine believer, you're going to take Christ's hand in marriage. All right. yes. You're going to take his hand in marriage and you're going to love it. Mm -hmm. You are going to be married to Christ for all of eternity. This marriage, I want you to understand today that it seals your fellowship with Christ. Mm -hmm. I picture that stone that we're going to receive that his name that has his name engraved on it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like our wedding band, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Do you see where I went with with that? Mm -hmm. As the bride of Christ, mm -hmm. the church will be the crown jewel of heaven. Mm -hmm. That will appear. We are told in scripture in the 21st chapter of Revelation, the ninth through the 11th verse will appear like a Jasper stone and will be clear as crystal. Mm -hmm. I want you to know today that we are going to be a beauty to behold in heaven. Well, well, right. And we're told here in the eighth verse of the 19th chapter, we're told here that it will be granted to the bride of Christ to be arrayed in fine linen, mm -hmm. a robe mm -hmm. that will be both clean, we're told, and bright. Mm -hmm. Here again is another reward. Right. This, this fine linen. Mm -hmm. Being married to Christ. Do you want to be married to Christ today? Do, do you want to receive that fine linen? Do you want to be arrayed in this fine linen yeah. that will be both clean and bright? Yeah. Well. We are told that this robe it is the righteous acts of the saints. Mm -hmm. Don't take this lightly. Mm -hmm. all right. You see, all of our lives, the true believer, we have strived, we have striven to be righteous. Mm -hmm. And when we all get to heaven, mm -hmm. I want you to know that we are going to be clothed in it. Yeah. We strive today to be righteous. Mm -hmm. Yet we are still sinners. We fall short of the glory of God. But the day, I tell you, is fast approaching where we are all going to be clothed in righteousness. Another reward from the Lord. You see, we are going to be full of glory. And we will be that perfect image of the Lord that we strive to reach on this journey another reward. Mm -hmm. We are going to one day be perfect. Right. We are one day going to be without sin. Mm -hmm. Do you want that reward? Yeah. Yeah. You see that, 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 that sin, it is a heavy burden. Mm -hmm. And we see another reward right there. That heavy burden is going to be taken away from us. Again, I want to get to heaven. I don't want that burden anymore. God, we will see in the 14th chapter of the book of Revelation in the 13th verse, we'll see that he say of those that attend this wedding, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. And we'll see there in that same verse that the spirit then said, yes, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Blessed, the Lord said. Blessed are the dead who die in him. Who is at this wedding is what the Lord said. Let us remember that to be blessed means to be spiritually happy. When we get to heaven, 
we are going to be spiritually happy. Yes, sir. That, that, that burden is taken away and now our soul will be at rest. Mm -hmm. We will be content. Our contentment will be coming from having not to worry about today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There will be no more heartaches. Right. There will be no more burdens. Yeah, yeah. There will be no more stress. And to think that some believe that gaining the riches of this world is the finish line. The world's finish line, it pales in comparison to the finish line that awaits at the gates of heaven. All right. All right. Solomon said of those that strive for the riches of this world, their days are sorrowful and their works burdensome with no rest. Mm -hmm. The outcome of it all, Solomon said again, was vanity, meaning that it was empty meaning that the labors for the riches of this world, they are pointless. Mm -hmm. I look around today and I see the gas prices that are nonsensical to me. Mm -hmm. I then turn on the news and I see more violence, again, that is nonsensical to me. Mm -hmm. I drive to church this morning and I see someone make extremely dangerous passes with no care for life, themselves or those that are around them. Again, something that is nonsensical to me. I even hear and see that there is a shortage of something that is like baby formula in this nation. Adding that on top of all of the things that, that we go through in life, all the things that goes on around us, that simply just don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And yet people would wonder why heaven is always on my mind. <laughs> what can you not understand? Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy this life that the Lord has blessed me with. Amen. But at the very same time, I tell you today that I gleefully, I happily dream of the day when I reach the finish line that is at the gates of heaven. I gleefully dream of the day when I cross over that finish line into the Lord's heavenly kingdom. Again, I tell you today, I want my reward. When one runs a race <clears throat> and they can see the finish line ahead of them, there is a sudden renewal of energy. To, to reach that finish line, All right. to get to that finish line, to make it. Mm -hmm. As I said before, heaven should be your finish line. Oh, yes. And if it is your finish line, you should be filled with all kind of hope to reach that finish line, to make it to that finish line. Mm -hmm. I encourage you today to keep on running towards the heavenly gates. I encourage you today, don't stop to look back. Don't do it for one second. Mm -hmm. Keep on keeping on. Keep on pushing forward towards the heavenly gates. Mm -hmm. When those who run a marathon cross the finish line of that race, some they raise their arms in victory. Mm -hmm. Others, they cross the finish line and they collapse to the ground as they are exhausted as, as they try to catch their breath. When you and I cross that finish line, the Lord tells us that he is going to wipe away every tear. Whether our arms are raised or whether we have collapsed to the ground, God says that he is going to wipe away every tear. In his heavenly kingdom, Jesus said that there will be no more death. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. Why would I not want to go to this place? Why would you not want to go to this place? 
those who cross the finish line with their arms raised or collapse in hell, they may be prideful of reaching that place. They may be exhausted of reaching that place. But I tell you that they will not receive a reward. They will not even be able to catch their breath. You see, hell is a place that is pictured throughout scripture as a place of torments, Mm -hmm. a place of sorrows. In the story of the rich man and the beggar named Lazarus, the rich man ended up going to this place of torments, we are told. Mm -hmm. And the torments, we are told in scripture that they were so great that the rich man, he desired to be relieved greatly from his torments. Mm -hmm. He even pleaded, we're shown in scripture, that his loved ones be made aware of that place and that they be warned to do everything possible not to come that way. Scripture shows us that Satan ends up in this place. Mm -hmm. Not only does Satan end up in this place, but all who follow, all of those who choose to follow him in his path, that they too end up in this place of torments this place that is also known as outer darkness, Mm -hmm. this place that is also known as the lake of fire. This fire, I want you to understand, it won't be physical, but spiritual. Mm -hmm. The torment of this place will be a torment, we are told in scripture, that is from day to night. It will be forever and ever. Now let us consider for a moment here that time as we know it, will not exist in this place. Time as we know it will not exist in eternity. Mm -hmm. So this suffering, it will be an eternal suffering, a long lasting suffering that is nonstop. Again, I ask the question, does this sound like a prize that you would want to receive after having lived in this world and having taken your journey? I certainly hope it is not. So I will make one more plea of encouragement in this series of sermons to you today. If you are already heading in the direction of the gates of heaven, continue steadfastly in that direction. Follow Christ and don't look back. If you are headed in the direction that is opposite of the gates of heaven, Mm -hmm. I encourage you to stop, Mm -hmm. to listen to God, follow his guidance, follow his direction, Mm -hmm. depend on his protection, Mm -hmm. depend on his providence, Mm -hmm. turn away from going the opposite direction Mm -hmm. and follow him. Follow his only begotten son. I encourage you today to repent. Turn to him. My hope is that after hearing of the great happiness, joy, the pump and circumstance of heaven, my hope is that you will feel more motivated today to go to heaven. My hope today is that you will feel motivated to get there. Lay up for yourself treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys that treasure, and thieves, they can't steal it. There are great rewards that are waiting for us there Mm -hmm. in heaven. There are many rewards waiting for you, Mm -hmm. so strive to get there. I hope that you're like me today. I hope that you want your crown. Do you want your crown today? Do you want that manna today? Do you want that that stone that is engraved with the name of Christ that I said is like a wedding band? Do you want to be married to Christ for all of eternity? Do you want that fine linen that is both clean and bright? Do you want to be the crown jewel of heaven? Do you want that eternal happiness? Do you want that eternal joy? Do you want eternal peace? If you want all of it, I encourage you today, run the race of faith so that you may receive this reward. Amen. 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 
Amen.